Hi, I'm Tome Nahumi and I'm a technology evangelist here at Dell EMC. Today, I have another exciting announcement to give you and show off. Dell CSM Replication Module for Parstore. CSM for Replication Project aims to bring replication and disaster recovery capabilities of Dell EMC storage arrays to Kubernetes clusters. It helps you to replicate groups of volumes using the native replication technology available on the storage array and can provide you a way to restart applications in case of both planned and unplanned migration. In this demonstration, I will show you how to replicate WordPress and MySQL applications running on Kubernetes to a remote site by leveraging the native Parstore replication technology. As you can see on the screen, I have two Parstore clusters running version 2.0. On the left, I have the source array, and on the right, the target array. By navigating to the remote systems view, we can see that these two systems are configured for native replication. Now, let's connect to our Kubernetes clusters. On the left, we have the source Kubernetes cluster connected to the source array using the Parstore CSI driver, and on the right, we have the target Kubernetes cluster connected to the target array. In order to protect our assets, we use the Parstore Replication Storage class. We can see the protection definition, such as Remote System Information and LCLA, and on the target, we have the opposite direction of the systems. These storage classes are backed by Parstore Replication policies, which are configured at the array level. RepCTL cluster list command provides us information about the clusters which are configured for replication. RepCTL RG list provides us information about replication groups configured for replication. With Parstore, each replication group aggregates the persistent volumes in the same namespace that are protected using Parstore replication storage class. Now, I'm deploying a WordPress application with MySQL database on the source site. As you can see on the right, those persistent volumes have been replicated on the target site as well. By navigating back to Parstore Manager, we can see that a new volume group has been created. This volume group is configured for application according to the storage class definition. The WordPress and MySQL volumes are protected as part of this volume group and replicated to the target site using the native Parstore replication technology. We can see that these volumes have been created on the target array in read-only mode and they are not attached to any host yet. By running the RepCTL RG list command again, we can see that the replication groups are now synchronized and they are in ready state. Now, let's connect to the application and do some modifications. I'm providing the site information details and changing the title. These changes, of course, are written to the persistent volumes. Now, it's time to initiate a failover. I'm running the RepCTL failover command and specifying the replication group and the target site. Within a few seconds, the state has changed to failover in progress. Now, let's connect to the target site and deploy the WordPress and MySQL applications. Because the persistent volumes are already there and have changed to read-write state during the failover, they are automatically attached to the pods during the application deployment. As you can see, our website is up and running on the target site, connected to the replicated volumes, which contain the data from the source volumes including the changes I've made. Now that we are running on the target site, I'm changing the color schema and saving the change before failing over the application to the original site. Now I'm running the RepCTL reprotect command and specifying the replication group and the original source sites in order to start the replication in the opposite direction. Within a few seconds, the state has changed from failed over to normal. I'm running the RepCTL failover command again 
and specifying the replication group and the original source site to fail back the application to my production original site. At this stage, all I need to do is to delete the pods so they will be automatically recreated and connected to the disks that have changed to read-write mode. Within a few seconds, we can see that my website is up and running, connected to the database and the replicated volumes, which contain the data from the target volumes, including the changes I've made. I really hope you find this demo useful, and thank you very much for watching.